salad and rice. And I'm going to talk about Wild Tales and James will be talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame again. And uh, I guess I'll get going. So the blueberries, I meant that for the top of the salad, but as you can see, I really piled that salad high. And when you pile them high, blueberries are the last thing you have. Yeah, they roll right off. It's like a, an avalanche of rocks. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't going to work out. But anyway, it's um, red wine vinaigrette dressing, mm -hmm. which goes really nicely with blueberries yep. and pecans and stuff. And I it goes was, well, as I recall, with kale too. Yeah. When you get something that makes you forget the taste of kale, yeah, you got a winning combo because kale. Don't worry about kale. It. Fights a lot of things, including cancer. It's important stuff to eat. So, uh, it's only about half kale and half romaine. But um, anyway, it's a it's a pretty good salad, I think. And, and the rice is pretty basic. I cooked that with um, chicken broth in the rice cooker outside here. And then I uh, heated it up inside. It's not too hot today. So I thought, well, I can fry it for a little bit inside. And I wouldn't raise the temperature too much, I think. So that's what I did. So I fried it with some garlic. And um, I didn't actually fry it because I just put more broth in to um, steam it, I guess, with some garlic. And then I just put the curry sauce on and some shredded cheese, and that's that. So, pretty easy. So, anyway, James doesn't tend to like it when I put the blueberries on the salad anyway. He often tells me, I'd rather eat the blueberries just plain. So, well, they're so awesome. Yeah. So it might but work. But the specimen is rolling off. That was good. So anyway, Wild Tales. Well, this one um, is probably from Spain. I think it's from Spain. I mean, there's mountain scenery and stuff, but there's a lot of mountain scenery in a lot of places where Spanish people live. But in any case, this is in Spanish. So if you want to watch it, you will have to read, unless you happen to know Spanish. Then, because um, there's a lot of subtitles there. But this is um, a movie that is actually a, a collection of short stories on a common theme, and that's revenge. So. It's uh, really, really entertaining. I watch this in the middle of the night. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I can't sleep. So I'll put on a movie and usually fall back asleep. But I did not fall back asleep because this was so entertaining that I watched the whole thing uh, without falling asleep. So this came out in 2014, it says. And I can't remember exactly how many minutes it was. I'm not seeing it here, but it was uh, it was a little more than the hour and a half usual. But I didn't mind. Well, honestly, it didn't even feel like that because it's short stories. So it didn't feel long at all. It was very good. And it says it was a nominee. Best foreign language film for Academy Award nominee and I can see that it was entertaining I really liked it and I didn't expect to because really I can't think of anything that I've liked coming from Spain I like the soccer team but that's not movie <laughs> so but I guess you know for a long time I didn't like any films from Australia. I was like, oh, do I really want to put myself through something from Australia again? And well, now, wasn't lately... wasn't alone in that. I, it was gruesome. We almost yeah. put them on a no-watch mm -hmm. list. But then, uh, I think it was just this year, I started, uh, I was watching some and they were good. And then more and more, and I'm like, huh, now their movies are good. 
So, who knows? Maybe we'll see that with, with Spain. Maybe their stuff will be... Whatever. Anyway. So, I don't know what James will want to talk about with this. He went through the rest of it yesterday, I guess. So, he's now seen everything on this. It's, so, maybe he will talk about Pearl Jam and Journey because that's really all he had left to watch of this. I really like David Letterman's uh, speech to that guy. Apparently, Neil Young was supposed to induct Pearl Jam. Now, that might have been a joke. You know what I'm saying? So we, oh, we, it might we have been. should check it out. Yeah. So I don't because, want to say too much about that. Yeah, he might have been this, joking about it. That's right, because he is a comedian, right? Yeah, yeah. So, that's right. He might have been joking about it. And the band was joking about it, too. They yeah. Joke. But that's a... I mean, that's what people say about Neil Young, is that he... He stands people, yeah. and especially so, women, though. So it could have just been a joke about it. That, yeah, but anyway, David Letterman was there to do it, and he did a great job. I really liked his speech, to um, his introduction. I more than their music because I don't like Pearl Jam at all, and I didn't like Journey at all. They had a lot more chops than Pearl Jam. They did, the singer, but the singer was not up to it. He was, I mean, he was trying to belt it out. And Pauline's heard this song. But he singing. wasn't always hitting the notes. And it, when you're belting it out and you don't hit the notes, yikes. Yeah, so. so they had him mic'd down. He should have been, like, the, the singer, that's like, in that band, that, that's what it's all about really right and so that should have been mic'd up but in their case they mic'd him down and I think maybe they did that for a reason maybe he was having some vocal trouble I don't know didn't don't sound know. like it. it I noticed that oftentimes when he was trying to hit the high notes he was bending way back the guy's gonna have terrible back troubles when he gets a little bit older and not like an old age necessarily but when he really stretched back and was trying to hit the high notes he was falling well short. You used to sing in a choir. You know. Yeah, yeah, you he, know. He was not pulling it off. No. It was kind of sad. I felt sorry for him because yeah, kind I of did a too. Filipino, you know. Yeah, he and looked I've like he was really Filipino. trying. And but he, it wasn't working. It was not working. He might so, be Filipino with a Spanish name, but he seemed to have a Spanish name. Latino name. Yeah. So anyway, um, what do you have to say? Well, I'd heard all sorts of things about this new singer who replaced Steve Perry. Steve Perry was there to help accept the award. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounded as though there was something wrong with the speaking voice. <laughs> something wrong with the speaking voice. You're not going to be able to sing it. Yeah. yeah. Like he was a I'll real. Get you some more water. Almost like, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. So, I don't know if it's curry though. Yeah. It's a little spicy on the ricey. So, um, he's, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy, like Pauline said, that band was about him, originally. You know, uh, really belting stuff out. Kind of in the upper stratosphere. So I was surprised to see him there, accepting, because I, I knew he kind of quit the group, the touring with group or whatever. And I thought he was going to be singing, and then it was kind of a disappointment, because I kind of like singers that can belt it out. I could bring more rice to go with it. Is that a blue jay? Is he wanting some water there? Is <laughs> he saying, more, more? We got a nice blue chip. Right, hangs. He's been hanging around here at least uh, for more than a year. Anyway, never liked Journey much, though uh, I've got to appreciate their musical chops. 
And that includes Steve Perry. It's just the lyrics, you know? Yeah, Marshall McLuhan was once said something to the effect, maybe several times, the medium is the message. And uh, John Lennon adapted that for his uh, response around 1970 to Tom Jones. Tom Jones was starting to make it, I think, in Las Vegas at that point in time, shaking his hips. And probably doing a more impressive job of it. And he actually that right said then um, Elvis Presley who was hit in Las Vegas at roughly the same time. So what did John Lennon say about Tom Jones? The medium without the message. And that applies to a lot of impressive people. The medium in rock and roll. And outside of rock and roll too. Yeah, a lot of people have a lot of talent playing their instruments or singing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they really don't have anything to say. Yeah. And it's too bad. And if you're like that, if you're like cream, if it was good enough for cream to work with what they gave themselves cream that name for two different reasons. One of them is uh, for the same reason why 10CC gave themselves the name. Uh, Pearl Jam gave themselves the name. But the other reason is because because they considered themselves and other people considered them the cream of the crop. And uh, if it was good enough for cream, including Eric Clapton, Jack Bruce, way more talented than Eric Clapton, and Ginger Baker was pretty talented too, although he didn't have a talent for it, didn't ingratiate himself with people, and that's another thing. If they were willing to work with a poet, anyone in rock and roll should be willing to work with a poet, and that includes Journey. They're very talented, a couple of their original band members, or something like original band, early, early band members, were uh, members of Santana. And then there's a guy called Ainsley Dunbar. He's the guy who's, when he was doing his acceptance speech, he used the English accent. Why is English? So he used to be with uh, some, some group, of, I've forgotten which, uh, way back when, maybe late 60s, early 70s, and stuff like that. He was kind of going around, I think, from group to group and so on and so forth. They've got guys with chops like crazy, you know, like a, we've got chops like a whole team of, of lumberjacks. And uh, like uh, Bruce Lee and Jet Lee combined or something like that. They've got amazing chops. But why they don't get a decent lyricist or why they never got a decent lyricist to work with them, I don't know. I think they decided to kind of do a really professional, smooth form of selling out. I don't think they wanted mm -hmm. lyrics that were at all challenging and stuff like that. Do what you want, but if you do that, don't expect me to be overly impressed. I might be impressed, but not overly so. I, I don't think I ever would have even been tempted to buy a Journey album. I might have uh, picked some stuff up, very much you. Pearl Jam, so the, the Pearl Jam trumped Journey, even though Journey might have sold more albums than that. But Pearl Jam, David Letterman and Ducks Pearl Jam. That was the high point of the evening, aside from, yes, Rick Wakeman's acceptance speech. Rick Wakeman actually, per unit time, was funnier than David Letterman. But David yeah, Letterman he knew he had right. he was doing the introduction, right? Mm -hmm. So he had to get he had to actually say stuff that was serious. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rick Bakeman was uh, you know, talking in joking terms about his dad and so on and so forth, however he knew my dad and so on and so forth. He used that to lead into a couple of jokes, really. So David Letterman actually had to Introduce the band, so uh, that wasn't his fault, you know. Uh, well, I thought he did a I, great job. It's amazing. He was a weatherman, not a letterman. Uh, mm. And uh, 
because he does he has good uh, delivery. He does uh, he delivers stuff quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eddie Vedder, I don't. I do like Eddie Vedder's smile. He's the lead singer. He's got a really sweet smile. You never expect that from an alternative band singer, in particular. And I kind of like the bass player. I think the bass player is the guy who comes from Big Sandy, Montana, and he came in dressed almost Amish style. Mm. Was he wearing shorts too, <laughs> like an Amish type of hat? It's hilarious. Um, I kind of gave a shot to everyone else in the, the group. He said, uh, I've never liked people in suits. <laughs> Guess what? Everyone else in the group oh. was wearing suits. Mm -hmm. uh, well, hopefully he said, I'm going to say this, so it's not really my person. But maybe he's not with a group anymore. He just yeah, it came back for the... Yeah, doesn't look very nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Guys are sometimes that way. They're always giving each other shots. I don't believe in that. And generally, uh, you know, when I was a sports team, guys left me alone. When I was at, the work, at work, guys left me alone. I'd tease people about what they were good at, not about their weaknesses. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, every so occasionally, someone would take me on. I'd say, I don't tease you. I'd be saying that to myself. Nowadays, I'd say it to them. I don't tease you. Who are you, you stupid? Whatever. There's one guy on my soccer team who called me Belly, is my last name, Bell. Well, you know, like if I saw him now, I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm smaller than you. I'm Little Belly. You're Big Belly. Big, fat, beer gut Belly. He had a belly like Henry VIII, and he was, I believe, he's younger than me. I was like, at that point in time, 27, 28 played two years with that team, Albert Major Soccer League, Albert Royals, and he was, I think, 26 and 27, so hey, baby. a year younger. Hey, is that uh, Chickadee? Is a Chickadee boy? He, he loves singing different songs to you. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to earn his supper a little bit early. Hey, You're a good little bird, I'm telling you. There we go. That's something wrong. You don't hear them singing that, that thrilling thing. Mm. You gonna come get some seeds? Are you hungry? Pauline holds some seed out for you. There He's up here now. That's okay. You'll come back. Anyway, uh, in some ways he's making way more interesting sounds than we were hearing yesterday on the... Uh, 32nd Rock and, annual Hall of Fame. Yeah. Pearl Jam, you know, one of the problems, I, I've never liked like John K. deeper singers, maybe it's bears of tone, it's not quite bass stuff in rock and roll because, you know, a rock and roll guitarist tends to play power chords. So it's just uh, tends to be the top two strings of a guitar, the deep strings. Did you know that? You don't bother with it, on, you know, when they're playing chords. So the, everyone's chomping these chords out, and then the guy's trying to sing over that sort of stuff. You notice how muddy that their sound sounds. It's not just because they're not great sounding. It's there's a reason why the so many of the leading rock vocalists are tenor. Now we tend to think of heroic tenors and opera and all that sort of stuff, but one of the reasons is there's this you know you got a big bass going. And then you got the guitars playing almost like, the rhythm guitars are almost playing like bass anyway. Because they're playing the deep strings, the top strings, the, the thick strings, on a guitar. They might play uh, three of the top strings, but they tend to like playing the top two strings. Power chords they're called. And a vocalist is going to get lost. He's got to be really powerful. He's got a deep voice and he wants to sing over that. Even a baritone voice. I don't think Eddie Vedder's got the deepest voice in the world. Well, I just don't think they have very mellow... Um, they don't have very good melodies. The melodies are horrible. And I, I think it's largely a function of not being a great vocalist. I, yeah. If a vocalist doesn't have great range, how are you going to have a melody? So all you their can, songs tend to sound the same that way. Yeah. So what do you do to overcome that? You know, Paul Simon didn't have the greatest range. Um, Art Garfunkel did. 
and yeah, they have different that's ranges. It. Yeah, you so just get yourself uh, somebody to harmonize with you. Harmonize. Yeah. Uh, another thing they did was trade songs back and forth. So, yep. uh, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, that's a uh, Art Garfunkel medium. Um, to Emily, wherever I may find her, or something like that, Art Garfunkel. One of their most satisfying songs, actually, musically, is uh, something that uh, has Paul Simon intoning the he's verses. Eating. What was that? And she could he's eating. eating, that's why he's not that's singing right now. There we go, it's stuff in So cute mouth. watching this. Yeah, so it, uh, it's about Paul Simon. The image on, on the wall, or the mirror on the wall, casts an image, dark and small. That's like Paul Simon, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure at all. Blinded by the light of God, truth, and right. And I wander in the night. You notice how he's dealing with dark. You mm -hmm. see? He actually is a poet, an underestimated poet. He kind of uh, never reached the heights he tended to reach in uh, Simon and Garfunkel in his solo career. But yeah, wander in the night without direction. And then all of a sudden, so, uh, I'm doing it kind of falsetto, but that's Art Garfunkel doing the chorus. I'll continue to continue to pretend. So, that's how they get the range. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, choruses, you tend to want to be more emotional, uh, maybe uh, higher with more leaps, and not like John Lennon when he was singing, pretended to take steps from one tone to another. Paul McCartney? He had a good enough voice where he'd do leaps. And when it comes to catchy melodies, we prefer leaps. They don't want to be doing it all the time, but uh, just where you're getting to intense emotion or something like that. So, there are many ways you can get around this thing, but what do you got to do? <laughs> got to use your imagination and get some people in the band that can help you out. Get someone with a falsetto voice, get someone with a tenor voice, or, or whatever. Don't just be depending on Eddie Vedder to bring home the bacon, or whatever. The, uh, the stuff, I, I was amazed. People were singing along and I'm going, you know that I've heard some of these songs over and over and over again. I need a lyric sheet to tell what they're singing. Yeah, the only, like I I know the chorus for Alive. That's it. Uh, how that's does it go? Whoa, whoa, I'm still alive? Yep, or, yeah, that's something it. Something like that. That's, and then the, he hey, 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 I'm, I'm still alive. And he keeps on going and going. I'm going, I get the idea. You only have to say it once, maybe twice. Each time you come to the chorus line or whatever. Some people don't understand choruses. They think it's just a... Man, that's an awesome line I came up with. I'm still alive is kind of like not really... There's nothing going for it. It's just things things someone could say or whatever. Well, I'm still alive or whatever. No, we did hear some good lines though from... Uh, who was it that said... Um, singing for a song, which one? It was one of those. Maybe it was Chicago or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. That's a good so song. I'm not just because I don't terribly like a group. No. I'm not looking at busting anyone's job. No, you come I up with like a good Chicago, line, you're going to get uh, you're going to get you're going to get some respect from. Me. I, it, it was singing for a song, yeah. right? Singing for free. That's good. That's good. Just not enough of them throughout their career yeah. to really uh, draw my uh, my interest. Mm -hmm. Pearl Jam, Alive, I didn't even know what that was called. And Given to Fly, I can't even recall no, what that song I, is. No, we just heard it last night. I don't remember it. Better Man. The only thing, the reason why I remember that is because Letterman, someone was saying to Letterman, or he said it, I should have been called Letterman, or Better Man, instead mm -hmm. of Letterman. Mm. 12 minutes? Mm. Four minutes. Four minutes. And four lost and a, lot, a little minutes. bit of track of time. I uh, took a few uh, meds for uh, treatment today, and uh, those meds were Benadryl. Mm. One Benadryl and one something, something called Montelukast, and they both make you drowsy. So you'll have to bear with me. 
Hopefully I haven't been totally off kilter. Maybe I am all the time. Don't think so though. Anyway, I did like ELO reasonably well. I like when they did roll over Beethoven and started with na 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 yeah, I love the strings. I, I was talking about that before, probably yesterday. I don't bias. I don't think I said I, I rewatched it. Okay, Deportee written by Woody Guthrie. I suspect that was written in the 30s about migrant workers and stuff like that. And Good song. It's got a great tune. Yeah. But the lyrics are sometimes you gotta take the lyrics into context. Woody Guthrie is some sort of a left winger. I'd like to think he wasn't a fellow traveler or even a commie member. But you know, let's say it was written in the 30s. What? You know, what sort of labor practices were happening in the Soviet Union? I'm pretending to chew my nails down to the quick. Well, all the way down to the, the skin. Because, you know, like down here, not the quick here. Because the folks didn't have a choice. They weren't, the, these deportees were coming to the United States. The, the, the Latinos that Woody Guthrie was saying about. Uh, they were, they'd be wanting the, the, the laborers I'm talking about in the Soviet Union would have loved to leave the Soviet Union. They were sent to places like Magadan in uh, the Far East, Eastern, uh, Eastern Siberia, into Soviet Central Asia, more like a desert, but by times a cold desert. Places you'd never heard of, way up on the Arctic Ocean in, uh, in European Russia. They weren't all sent to Siberia, but freezing cold conditions were, to, not to the bone, well, literally to the bone, I suppose, worked to death, starved, overworked. That's what was happening. So you're listening to me, the ghost of Woody Guthrie, and all you folks are hugely enthused about that song. You know, this isn't a ille quoque argument, which is a form of tu quoque. It isn't saying, oh, the Soviet Union was just as bad. No, it was way worse. And that's what Woody Guthrie should have been singing about. That's what Pete Seeger should have been singing about. But he, Pete Seeger, was a card-carrying communist. I think he stopped carrying a card uh, in the 60s, but he still was a commie. Uh, definitely at heart. From what I can tell, I don't think he ever recanted his commie views. He was a Stalinist. He, in other words, this isn't after Stalin died. He supported the Soviet Union while Stalin was alive for many years, at least a dozen years, a Stalinist. And people are trying to rehabilitate him and stuff like People like Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen never struck me as being that intelligent. Bruce, guy, I like you. You want to, I can tell, you want to actually speak the truth. Speak the truth to evil. <laughs> You know, there are different grades of evil. Capitalists, I consider them bad, board, many of them borderline evil, many of them like Donald Trump, stone cold evil. But there are people that are way more evil than average capitalists. Get it straight, okay? And many of those evil people haven't just been people like Adolf Hitler, Benito Mussolini. They've been people of the left wing, really Adolf Hitler and Mussolini were nationalist left-wingers. Check history. I know many folks out there don't believe me, but yeah, they were actually socialists. Yeah. And, but they were internationalist socialists. 